In the first part, when we were setting up hosting sessions menu, I chose tag to be the first game mode we're going to try. So in the next two videos, I will show you how to program our own version of the game tag. In the future, we'll make more games, so let's make a folder where we'll store all blueprints and other files specifically made for individual game modes. As you might have guessed, we will definitely need a new game mode blueprint, GM tag, a player controller, PC tag, and later a game state as well. Imagine these three blueprints as the essential part for each game. We'll use this level for testing, so let's swap game mode play with game mode tag in world settings. The default pawn class for game mode tag isn't what we want to spawn. In fact, we'll manually spawn players when they join this session, so remove the default pawn choice and leave it as none. To handle joining, we can use an event called onPostLogin, which fires whenever a player joins. It also gives us a new player controller, which is important, so we'll store it in an array for later. This array will be a type of PC tag, so that we won't have to cast to PC tag each time. Then we spawn the third person character. And for spawn transform, we'll use a game mode specific function find player start. Input called player is a player controller, so the one that has joined. And with incoming name parameter, we'll set which player starts to look for. Each one will have its own index as its name. You can change player starts name with the player start tag parameter. Set tags to numbers from 0 increasing by 1. And when a player joins, we'll use the current number of players, minus 1, or change tag starting at 1 to choose which player start to spawn at. Then we use found player start for spawn transform. And lastly, we take control of the spawned character with the newly joined player controller using the possess function. Now let's begin making the structure for our game. Firstly, we want to have a countdown timer that the server activates, and when the timer hits zero, everyone will start moving. For this, we'll add a new event, countdown, which will loop through all joined player controllers and call a replicated event on the client to display a countdown widget. This means we need to add a new event to our player controller called show countdown, which will display a countdown widget. So create a new widget w countdown, and inside we'll first add a time integer, which will decrease by one each second using a timer. Then we can add a text component, anchor to the middle of the screen, changed font size, resized, and aligned text to center. For the actual text, we'll make a binding using that time integer variable. When the countdown reaches zero, we want to show start text instead. Using a branch, we can check if the timer is at zero, and if so, we return text start, otherwise time. Also, a second later, or when timer reaches minus one, we can hide this widget with remove from parent. Make sure to set show countdown to run on owning client and reliable because it's the server that calls it for the client. What's left is to call a show countdown in the game mode for each player. Now the countdown event also needs to be executed and for that I decided to let the server trigger it by pressing enter in PC tag. Now, when I press enter, it starts counting for each player. But we can also press it multiple times, which is no good, so let's prevent that in the game mode with a boolean variable started, which sets to true after calling countdown, that is only if started is false at the beginning. I realized I could have used do once instead, but maybe we'll take advantage of having the variable started for later. Now I can start the timer only once, which is great. Let's prevent players from moving before the countdown finishes and then unfreeze them when timer says start. For that, we'll go to the third person character blueprint and just call disable input on begin play. Then, after the timer, we'll call for each player a replicated event unfreeze, set to run on owning client and reliable, which will do the opposite, so enable input for the controlled character. 
In game mode, we again loop through the list of player controllers and 3 seconds after the countdown widget gets displayed, call that unfreeze. At the beginning, you can't do anything, but after the countdown, both the server and clients can start controlling their characters. Lastly, we'll add the match timer, which will stop the game when it reaches zero. We'll need a default match length value stored in a new match time integer variable. After we unfreeze all players, we can start the clock with a timer looping each second. Since each client will be able to see that time, we need to store it in a way that all clients can access it and update their timer numbers on the screen. A way for sharing server's values with all clients is via a game state. Inside, we'll make a current time integer, which will be set first to match time in the game mode, but before that you'll need to cast to the game state and save its reference. The timer node then calls an event each second, reducing game state's current time by 1. Ideally, you would store the actual time on the server and then pass it to others as those clients can cheat and change that time variable, but this way it's still ok, because whatever they change won't get sent to the server. He also checks when the time runs out, so if his clock is untouched, then it's going the way it should. I made some intentional mistakes that could happen in this part so that you can see how to solve them. Now we want a new widget called WInfo which will serve as the main display filled with all information a player needs during a match. We want the current match time positioned to the top. Then we'll of course need a binding, but to access match time we'll need to cast to GS tag game state first and save it. I decided to show the time in minutes and seconds. So to get minutes you divide time by 60 and to get seconds you compute modulo 60 of the time. How does that work? When you divide whole numbers, integers, the result is always a whole number, and the decimal places get cut off, and modulo 60 means the remainder of the division by 60, which are seconds. Then we format the text by appending minutes and seconds together with a column in between. For seconds, I want to show them with two digits, so I converted seconds to text, changed minimum integral digits to two, and then pass it to the append. Then, to show timers, we loop through the list of players again and call an event that will display WInfo widget, so let's head to PC tag and create one there. Called show info, and then use it in the game mode. Lastly, we must call show timers and let's see what happens. The timer is zero and we also get some errors, saying that WInfo widget can't read the GS tag variable, as if it wasn't set. That's true, because we didn't set GS tag game state in the game mode's defaults as the game state class, so the cast to GS tag always fails. Now the server sees correct time, counting down, but client still at zero. He's reading the time as zero because changes to the timer aren't replicated to the clients. To fix this, go to game state and change current time to replicated. Ok, now it works. Now the timer can go below zero, so let's stop that timer node when current time reaches zero with a function pause timer by handle. Lastly, we want to freeze all players again, so no one can continue playing after timeout. So we'll make a new event in PC tag called freeze with run unknown in client and replicate it again, which will disable character's input. Then we call this event on each player in game mode after timer hit zero. And this is it for this part. What we made here can also be used as a base for other game modes with a time limit. In the next video, we'll finish the game by allowing players to pass tags between each other 
and choose the loser based on who held the tag the longest. See you then!